Problem number one, what's wrong with this code? Well, if I run this code, I can see down here it mostly seems to work correctly, but the problem is I've got this none appearing right here. Why on earth does that appear? Well, the reason is the following. Up here where I've got the function, I'm printing the results of what's being passed in, which would be 10, 11, and 12. And this function right here, because the function is inside the print statement, this print statement will print whatever the sum function returns. What does this sum function return? Absolutely nothing. Is there a return statement in here? No, there isn't. Nothing's returned. I print out a plus b plus c right up here, and I print out the 33. Then I come down here and I print whatever this returns, which is nothing, and the keyword for that inside of Python is none. That's how it represents it. Not a zero, it doesn't return a thing. And that's why I got that extra none being printed out. Great, so now that we've identified the problem, how do we solve it? Simplest way is to go up here and take this print statement and just remove it and replace it with a return statement. And a return statement doesn't need parentheses. This will return a plus b plus c from the sum function and not print it in the sum function. But this right here will be replaced with what's returned. And I will print out 33 and not print out none because I don't print a function that returns nothing. Problem number two, what's wrong with this code? If I run this code, which starts off with x is 10, and then it writes out x is 10, I'll now increase x. I run increase x, and looks like it takes in the x, adds one to it, and returns it. But when I run it, doesn't look like x increases at all. What's the problem? Well, it's a fairly simple problem but can be very difficult for people to figure out. The issue is right here. I'm returning this increased x value. I add 10, I take 10, I add one to it, I return it, but what over here is capturing what's returned? Absolutely nothing. It's kind of like x plus one doesn't actually increase x, but x equals x plus one does. I've got the same issue here. If I want to fix this, what I need to do is set x equal to what increase returns. And now when I run it, x is equal to 11. Problem number three, correct the following code. This one's dead simple. After the function, I need to put in parentheses when I define it. Once I do that, this function works OK. It runs and prints out hello. Main thing, I just needed those parentheses. What's wrong with this code? Two problems, actually, one of which is pretty straightforward. These square brackets, the range is a function, and it doesn't use square brackets. Square brackets are reserved for arrays. Range is not an array. I use parentheses. Now if I run it, it well, the function looks like I should be counting to 10, but I'm not actually counting to 10. I'm counting 0 through 9. If I wanted to count actually up to and including 10, if I did something like this, 1, 11, when I would run it, it would go from 1 to 10. Basically, two errors. The big one, square brackets, need to be parentheses. OK, what's wrong with this code? First off, lots of things. One of the big items that a lot of people get into trouble with, I've got my return statement indented here. Meaning that when I start running this code, first time through, it's going to start the for loop. It's going to do the sum equals i, and then it's going to immediately return sum. It will not complete the for loop. Once you hit that return statement, the function's done, even if you're in the middle of a loop. I need to unindent this one. Now, it will not return sum until the for loop's done. But this still doesn't work well. For i in list, if I run this, what it actually returns is the last number out of the list. Again, another common mistake in that what we have going on 
we need to actually create a separate variable and use it. I'm going to set sum equal to zero, and then I'm going to add to sum whatever the item is in the list. I really don't like using i in this case. I like using i if I do for i in range and then some number because i is supposed to stand for increment. Zero, one, two, three. In this case, it's not an increment. I'm pulling 45 out, two, 10. I'm going to go ahead and change this and make it into item. Now, first time through the loop, item is going to be 45, then it'll be 2, then it'll be 10, negative 5, and 100 running it. I get a total of 152. Correct the following code. This is supposed to reverse a set of text. I run it, and if you look at it, it comes pretty close to reversing the text, but the problem is the first letter is still P. I like to reverse every other letter, but not that P. What's going on? Best way to figure out is going best way to figure out what is going on is to actually kind of trace through this and you can do that text programming is the coolest thing ever I'm going to print whatever this function returns I am returning something and I'm passing it the text great pop up here my results gonna be an empty string with just double quotes and text length is the length of the text I don't really know what that is let's just say it's like 20 then for i in range of text length. Okay, i to begin with is going to equal zero. Result equals result. Well, result is an empty string right now. Plus text at i, i is zero, times negative one. Okay, what's text position zero? A p. Well, I don't really want a p there, do I? Next time through the loop, what is it going to be? i is going to be one. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, and I add on a period. Then negative 2 would be an R. Yeah, the deal is that I'm starting at 0, and what I really want to start on is negative 1 to begin with. Or, excuse me, because I take it times negative 1, I want to start it at 1, and then 2, and then 3. In order to do that, really simple solution. All I need to do is right here where the i is, add 1. But that's not quite everything I need to do because order of operations means this 1 will be taken times negative 1. I want this to happen first. I'm going to do this. And now when I run it, I get my reverse string. There are a few other ways you could do this to get the correct answer, but this is one of them. All right, problem number seven, correct the following code. All right, start off with a function definition, while true. Oh, that means I'm going to loop forever, doesn't it? Kind of suspicious. I go back and take a look at that. Command is equal to input command. So whatever the user types in will go into the variable command. Fair enough. If statement, if command equals, oh, oh, there's a single equals here. Never have a single equals inside of an if statement. You always use double equals. That should be a red flag right there. If command is equal to, wait, I don't have a variable called f. Oh, what the user is trying to do is compare the command to see if it is equal to f. Well, I need double quotes around this then. I want to compare it against an exact value, not a variable named f. Put quotes around it. Hey, that's looking better already. I make my text look smaller so it fits on the same line there. Okay, if command is equal to F or M or S or D or Q, then these are legitimate commands and it will return that command that the user entered. Yeah, pretty cool. It will actually exit out of this infinitely looping while loop immediately with that return. Otherwise, it's going to print all this stuff. All right, let's run it, see if it works. Command four. Hey, that's not a command. Well, what if I put an F? Yay, works. Really, all I need to do, double equals and put quotes around those. That's it.